In today's video, we are gonna be talking about seven tips to streamline, organize, and make your marketing activities easier using Google Sheets. If you are a business owner, a marketer, or somebody who just uses marketing in your day-to-day -day lives, you will find that these tips to be helpful, especially if you're a Google Sheets user and lover like me. So stick around, we are gonna go through these tips one by one so you can understand how to use them, how they work, and what you need to do to be successful. Before we get started, if you can smash that subscribe button and like this video, that helps us know that you like content like this so that we can make more of it. But without further ado, let's start learning. Okay, for tip number one, we are gonna talk about validating email addresses using Google Sheets so you don't have to pay for any of those expensive email validation services or really any of those fancy tools. So all you gotta do is get a Google Sheets document, open it up, go into any cell, doesn't matter which cell, I'm just gonna use our support email for Simple Sheets as an example, but you type in the email address that you would like to validate, whether it's real, uh, it'd be nice if I spell it correctly, and then if you hover over it, as you'll see here, if it pops up with a user attached to the email, you know it's a real email address. So really quick, easy way to find out if an email is valid. Okay, tip number two, track and build UTM tags at scale with Google Sheets. I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can do this, but you'll see in my sheet right now, I have an example set up with a couple different sources. You can add whatever UTM variables you wanna use, uh, and then you just use the concatenate function to concatenate those variables into your URL, which if that sounds confusing, I'm gonna show you how to do it right now, so don't worry about it. So this is the formula that eventually you will have once you set it all up. And what this is is saying, we wanna have these four variables, these four cells added in with some text. Now, one thing to know when it comes to concat uh, concatenation, concatting, I don't know if that's even a word, uh, you wanna make sure you include uh, these quotes on the sides of any text that you wanna enter yourself. This is one thing that can be really tricky for some people sometimes is if you actually, if you do it like this, for example, it's gonna be an error. So you need to have the actual quotes on each side of any text you entered manually so that you can get it to show up. Uh, and actually this looks like it put it in the wrong spot, so I'm gonna fix that, and there you go. So this is just a concatenation function. You're gonna concatenate and you're gonna pick the first cell where you have your URL. Uh, there's a nice picture of me. And then you're gonna have your source, your medium, and your campaign if you choose those. Again, you can add whatever UTMs you'd like. Those are the three that I have in this example. Uh, but you could add more if you'd like. And then just make sure you have the name of it. The first thing you have, which is typically gonna be the source, needs to have that question mark in front of it. And then the rest have this, this I think it's called ampersand, I wanna say. Uh, the and sign there. Uh, I probably just got that wrong. I'm <laughs> just taking a stab in the dark on that. Um, but anyway, you want to make sure you have those like and signs. So you're you're saying, you know, I've got this UTM source and this medium and this campaign, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have all of it here. And if you'd like, you want to add a second one. I'll just do another one as an example. We'll do simple sheets again. I'll do YouTube. We'll call it organic. And I'm just going to call this video two, right? And then if I want, I just drag this down and you'll see now I have a new UTM. I can just copy this and drop it in my campaign and I'm off and running. There you go, that's tip number two. If you're creating content and you want it to rank on Google, you probably know there is a best practice for how long you want your titles to be on your blog posts. Now, depending on the software you're using, like WordPress, I know WordPress with Yoast, for example, is one that I've used, it'll tell you this, but if you don't have anything like that and you wanna know how long your blog post titles are and whether they are over or under the limit, you can easily set that up in Google Sheets. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I have a couple of different titles in here that we've used on recent blog posts for our blog, but if I wanna find the length of the blog post, all I need to do is press equals and then type in LEN for uh, length, and then it's already auto-selecting the cell there that I want. So I can just press enter and let it go. And then I wanna do that for my others as well. Now to give us just a little bit more uh, visual uh, clarity for myself, I'm gonna to wanna to add some conditional formatting to this. So to do that, I'm gonna to wanna to do that in row, or sorry, column B here, where I have my link data. I'm gonna click that, I'm gonna to go to format, click conditional formatting. And then I'm gonna to wanna to change this to where if the cell is greater than uh, and 60 being the benchmark for uh, good post length or good title length, I'm going to make it red. And then I'm going to add another rule here and say if the content is less than 60, 
I want it to be green, which means it's good, right? So, and you can do this a little differently if you want to add like a, so for example, 64 is not really that bad, it's just a little over, right? So like that would be more of a yellow than a red, but just for demonstration purposes, I just used the two different values. You can always add a third rule, which could be like a between, uh, I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So you could say if it is uh, uh, between like, let's say 60 and 70, you want it to be yellow instead. Cause it's like, yeah. it's not the worst in the world, but it's okay. Anyway, just another thing you can do with it, but this is a really easy and simple way to add formatting and to see how long your blog post titles are. And you can apply this to really any type of content that you're trying to measure the character length, so the number of characters used in that content. You can do it with something like this, quick and easily, in Google Sheets. For our next tip, we're gonna talk about how you can import Google Analytics data directly into your Google Sheets to make an analytics and analysis of your data that much easier. So really quickly, if you are not familiar with uh, data add-ons in Google Sheets, I'm gonna show you what, how you can do that. If you need any more information, I cover this in our Google Sheets course for Simple Sheets. You can check that out. But uh, anyway, if you go to extensions here and add-ons, you can go get add-ons. This will open up the add-on library so you can add any of the add-ons that you're looking for. In this case, we're gonna be looking for Google Analytics. Uh, the good news for me is I already have it installed, so you're gonna see it in action, but you just click here to install Google Analytics into your workspace so that you can then access it within any of your Google Sheets. Uh, but as it already is installed on mine, I have it right here. I can click Create Reports. It'll work on setting me up, and you'll see now I have the ability to grab really whatever I want. So I have a bunch of different Google Analytics accounts I'm attached to. You pick the account, you pick the property, you pick the view you wanna pull from, whatever metrics. Uh, and they have some good reference links here if you ever need to look up what uh, the reference, what the metrics are referenced as. So, so Google obviously has specific ways of, of referencing the data. So just you have to match that up to make your report. Just do that, name your report, click the run, and it'll show up in your Google Sheets document, just like that, and you'll be off and running. For our next tip, we are gonna talk about how you can set up a trend line really easily using the Sparkline function within Google Sheets. So I have some example data here from a couple different sales channels and a couple different months, and I wanna see how this is trending month to month. So to visualize this, all I need to do is go into the cell next to it, press equals, type in Sparkline, and then grab my set of data I wanna see, close it out, press enter, and there you go. I have my spark line. I can change the way I want to visualize it. You know, I can, I can shrink it. I can expand it just so I can see it a little better. And then of course, as with anything, I can drag it down and get it for my other two rows as well. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but can be a really useful tool if you want to quickly and easily visualize trend lines in your data when you're working through this and you're doing some maybe important analytics or you know, like sales analysis, whatever it might be, this could be a super useful and helpful function. We have jumped from Google Sheets into a service called Zapier for this next tip. This tip is to use Zapier to pull data into your Google Sheets to make your management analysis and organization just a little bit easier. So this is for many of you probably just a quick reminder of what is possible with Zapier if you've used this before. If you haven't, it is a software that allows you to connect multiple web-based pieces of software together. So for example, Facebook to Google Sheets or Twitter to Google Sheets or what, whatever it is that you want to connect, Zapier probably has that integration available. Though, take a look and make sure that what you're looking for is available in Zapier. There is a free trial if you ever want to play around with it. Um, actually, the one I have set up right in front of you is on a free trial because I don't pay for Zapier myself personally. Uh, but you can use it for all sorts of things if you choose to. So really quickly, if you want to track, let's say, for example, brand mentions, you could do that right within uh, Zapier and then import it into your Google Sheet. And I'm not going to set the whole thing up here, but for example, let's just say I wanted to do like Facebook page stuff. So if somebody says something on my Facebook page, uh, I want that to then show up in my Google document. Um, I can go over here and just type in Google Sheets. And now I just have to set the trigger for you know when somebody posts or there's a new post at the timeline or whatever, then it will trigger a new row in Google Sheets or, or however you want to do it. So you can do it with Facebook, you can do this with Twitter. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do this pretty much every major platform that's available, but just a nice and easy way to import data into your Google Sheets if you choose to and if it's important and useful for your marketing activities. The last tip is going to be how you can monitor your competitors' posts and topics using Google Sheets and the import XML functionality. So. If you're familiar with SEO and you're familiar with sitemaps, you'll know that every site has a map. It's an XML document. Uh, it tells Google where all the content is in the site. The better the site's organized, the better that XML document. 
is, and you can now leverage that in Google Sheets to pull all the data into Google Sheets for yourself to kind of look through the content that your competitors have been publishing. So um, obviously Wikipedia, not a competitor of mine, but I'm just using them as an example in this, uh, this tutorial, but you could use whatever page you wanted to use for this, and then you're gonna be using the equals import XML document, um, sorry, function here to import into your document uh, with that content. So I've set V1, which is my URL there, and then I'm just telling it basically to grab, and you'll see this is an example I imported directly from Google, uh, to add in anything where it references um, a link, and then just obviously I want it in English, not um, something that I can't read. So that's pretty straightforward, and it gives you all of the examples here then pulled from Wikipedia, and I'm not gonna go because it, it goes pretty deep. There's a lot of them because uh, it's, it's Wikipedia. But if you do this for a competitor, you'll find some, some interesting things really quickly that you might be able to uh, either piggyback on, uh, take ideas from, or see what the direction they're going in, and just keep an eye on what your competitors are doing as far as content goes. And that is it for our video. I hope you found these seven tips useful and helpful, and they will save you some time in your day-to-day -day marketing operations. If this video was useful for you, please, again, like and subscribe. And I would love to hear from you in the comment section which of these seven tips did you find most useful? Or maybe you have a tip I didn't hear about. If so, share it there too so others can find out and start saving more time and energy in Google Sheets. But with that, I'm gonna let you go and we'll see you in the next one.